Great. Well, welcome, everybody. It is 11 o'clock this morning. That's when we had anticipated starting our session. We might have a few folks roll in in the next couple of minutes, but we will get started. We want to respect your time. Um, we're here today, of course, to talk about the amalgamation negotiations um, between Clearwater County and the village of Caroline. And um, just wanted to start off with giving you a bit of an overview of how we're going to host the session today and provide some guidelines for everybody's participation so that we can have a very productive conversation. Um, and then we'll get into content. So to get us started off, um, do some introductions. Um, myself, I'm Stephanie Gagneau with Skyline Partners. We're um, part of the team with TetraCheck that is doing the support to administration on running the engagement and helping with reporting for the amalgamation process. Uh, Rick, if you could introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rick Emmons. I'm the CAO for Clearwater County. And Rick will be providing a good portion of the content today. Uh, Martina, if you could introduce yourself. Sorry, it took me a second to find the mic there. Uh, Martina McFarlane, I'm a consultant along with Steph and Lauren here today, just uh, helping with slides and with everything running smoothly today. Thank you. And Lauren? Good day, everyone. I will be taking note of the questions that you'll be putting in the chat and just making sure that uh, the appropriate person answers what you need to know. Excellent. Thank you. And Georgita? I'm Clearwater County's Communications Coordinator. And we are, as a team, supporting the session here. So some of us are taking a more technical role, making sure everything works. So if you have any concerns or any technical issues, please just do put that in the chat um, and we will do our best to help support uh, in whatever way we can. So for today, what we're going to cover is we're going to, Rick's going to provide us with the background around the amalgamation and sort of where they're at in the process. That'll include some background information in general to the amalgamation and provide you with an update on you know, up-to-date information from the Amalgamation Committee on topics such as governance, as well as finance and taxes and continuation of services. And then at the end of the session, we'll take all questions and provide you with the information about how to provide your feedback into the process. Um, and so to have a good conversation today, we just ask that everybody be respectful and open to all ideas. Um, because this is a relatively small group, we will certainly take your questions verbally at the end. Um, not everybody has the same perspective, and we ask that you just be open to hearing everyone's perspectives. Um, we do ask that you generally follow the process that we've got today. So we'll give Rick the floor to provide an overview of everything to date, and then we'll take questions. But of course, if something pops up in your mind, please feel free to type your questions in the chat as they arise. Um, and then Lauren will take those questions and make sure that we answer them. And then, of course, there'll be an opportunity at the end to ask your questions directly as well. Now we are videoing and recording this session. It will be posted on the internet through the Clearwater, Clearwater and Caroline website to be available to all residents and interested parties uh, to take a look at, particularly if they're still looking to provide their feedback, they can look at this session information and then uh, provide their feedback in the survey. So just keep that in mind. You are welcome to turn your camera on or keep it off as you like. You can also change your name profile if you would like that to not show up on screen at all. Okay, just, well, that's sort of the introductory pieces. I uh, want to make sure that everybody's ready to roll. Looks like we don't have any sort of new arrivals uh, into the session. And so I think we can jump in, Rick, to the overview of the background. Okay, well, thanks, Steph, and good morning, everyone. Thank you all for joining us today. Um, first, I think it makes sense to start out with a little bit of history from the village of Caroline in Clearwater County and uh, where we are today. So back in December of 2023, both councils and uh, formed a committee of the whole to enter into negotiations to discuss the possibility of amalgamating the two municipalities. This, same, this step came about around May of 2023 uh, with the amalgamation feasibility study that was conducted and found value in having both councils look towards the long-term sustainability, growth, and vibrancy of the region by way of amalgamation. To date, the amalgamation committee has discussed the 24 mandatory items as directed by the Minister of Municipal Affairs. The committee would like to reconsider three of those 24 items. Before they do that, the committee wants to hear back from our public, from you. They want to hear your opinions on first the number of councillors for an interim council 
Second, the number of elected wards or divisions, we call them, for the new municipality. And third, how the new municipality will be represented by a brand new council. We'll get into more details on these three items later in the presentation. If I am going too fast for everybody, uh, please don't hesitate to get me to slow down. I'm not reading the slides verbatim, just kind of giving a, a synopsis, but the, the information is on the screen before you. So let's take a look at what benefits and changes there, there are uh, and challenges with an amalgamation. An amalgamation is a tough process. It represents an, a bigger and better opportunity for the future, but it also presents drawbacks. On one hand, amalgamating the village and the county could create a larger, more balanced tax base, which could help for services, infrastructure, and repairs of maintenance. Both municipalities as one would have a stronger presence in an economic larger development base. There could be a reduced duplication of administration leading to better value uh, and less cost. On the other hand, it could be a costly and complicated process. There is a risk to service levels and delivery if there isn't enough resources like staff and budget to handle an increase in population. Councils may have difficulties in negotiating and coming to an agreement through this amalgamation process. This might result in having the province step in and have both municipalities lose their say in this entire process. We're interested in your thoughts. What do you think the benefits and challenges are with the village and the county amalgamated? In these slides, I just want to recap the outcomes of the committee's discussions on the 24 mandatory items. One of the items is to decide the boundaries for the new municipality. As you can see on the slide, Caroline is located well within the boundaries of the current Clearwater County, the county. This makes things pretty simple. Caroline's boundaries would remain the same as well as the county's. After amalgamating with the county, the only difference is the only difference is that Caroline would become known as a hamlet rather than today a village. Under the topic of governance, there's several several items fairly straightforward with recommendations from the committee. The proposed amalgamation date, also referred to as the formation date is projected to be January 1st of 2025. Why? Well, an incorporation date of January 1st is best and most practical for financial and tax purposes. The year 2025 is also the municipal election year. As noted in the next item, general municipal election, by having the amalgamation date set for January 21st of 2025, there's no need to ask the minister for a change in municipal election dates for the new municipality. Councillors of the former municipalities would be appointed as an interim council until the newly elected council takes its oath after the election. We'll get into more detail on this on an interim council later on in the presentation as well. As for the chief administrative officer, the CAO, the committee recommends that I take the position for the interim. Once a new council is elected, it will be up to that new council to go through a formal hiring decision. As for the appointment of the returning officer, the committee is recommending the appointment of Tracy Hay. Tracy is Clearwater County's legislative coordinator and returning officer is also included in her current job duties. Since the proposed amalgamation is the same time as the date for the nomination period, and close to the nomination date and election day, it's required to have the name of a returning officer or officers ahead of the time. So under governance it is municipal status. Again, the committee's recommendation is easy to understand. The province's criteria for defining municipal status. In this case, the new municipality is a rural area that includes farmlands, hamlets, 
rural residential subdivisions. By that definition, the status of a new municipality is municipal district or county. The committee is also recommending that the new municipality has the same name, Clearwater County. By choosing this name, it's expected to save at least $100,000 in rebranding costs for the new municipality. So logos on the door, letterhead, all of that. Caroline still remains its name as Caroline. It just goes from a village to a hamlet. The last governance topic is compensation. Sometimes when municipalities amalgamate, one of the municipalities or all of the municipalities, amalgamating municipalities, may have to compensate other municipalities for any funds owed as a result of the amalgamation. This is not the issue with the village and county pr proposed amalgamation. So we'll move on to the next topic, which is finances and taxes. As noted here, there are no annexed properties. So the committee is recommending that no property tax exemptions are required. There is no pre-amalgamation debt. So the recommendation is that there's no need for additional tax to service the debt. Financial statement audits are required by law. And because of the proposed January 1st, 2025 date, only two audits are necessary. As for the financial grants, the county and village are using grant funds to support this amalgamation process. Also related to the finance and taxes are items regarding interim tax treatment, assessment matters and municipal debt, assets and liabilities. As noted here on this slide, an interim tax treatment is not required as January 1st is the first date of a tax year for the new municipality. Current year property assessments for the proposed municipality will be treated uniformly and all asset debt and liabilities will transfer to the new amalgamated municipality. The chart shows a breakdown of assets, liabilities and debts, net financial assets, non-financial assets, and accumulated surplus for the county and village both. The last column shows an estimated combined total for these co categories under the new municipality. Last but not least is a continuation of services. This one we've heard quite a bit about from our, our general public. Services are always a concern. This topic covers Items related to the program services, service delivery provided by the current municipalities. The common theme here is that there's no significant changes in the transition period from date of amalgamation. Village staff will be integrated with existing county staff. Current regional emergency management program plans, along with existing staff and bylaws, will carry from both municipalities to the new municipality. The fire hall ownership will be passed on to the newly amalgamated municipality. As for the Caroline Library, services will continue the same as before. Under the Libraries Act and regulations, a new municipal library board will be needed to establish, to be established, and the recommendation for the existing board to transition into the new board under, again, the new municipality. So the operational services listed on this slide, the same theme as status quo. The committee's recommendations are to ensure uninterrupted service delivery. The new council's review of services for the new municipality. It will be up to future councils after amalgamation to set budgets that provide funding for the priority initiatives and actions decided upon council in each of their terms, as well as the ongoing operations of the municipality. The new municipality will play an essential role in helping residents and businesses enjoy and contribute to a vibrant, livable, and sustainable region. This means providing the right level of service at the right cost for a diverse and growing region. Now here's where you come in. The committee wants to hear from you. 
Your opinions, your ideas, as well as all your concerns are extremely important to both councils, this committee. As I mentioned earlier, there are three items that council wants to revisit. Number one, the number of elected officials for an interim council. I'm trusting Steph will really get into what an interim council is for those who don't know um, later in. Number two, the number of electoral wards or divisions. Ward and divisions are the same thing, just different terminology. Three, how the new municipality will be represented. All public input for these items will be collected and represented in a combined what we heard report. The amalgamation committee will review the report and consider the feedback prior to finalizing these three important recommendations. First up is interim council. If amalgamation goes forward, there will be an interim council from the date of the new municipality, again, January 1st, 2025, until the provincial general election, which is scheduled for October 20th, 2005. The initial recommendation was to have 12 elected officials on the interim council. These elected officials would be the same as they are now, currently seven from Clearwater County and five from the village of Caroline. What do you think of having the existing elected officials from both municipalities on the interim council? Do you have another idea for the interim council? Next is council representation. I'll explain a couple of things first, at large. Representation means that all councillors are elected by all residents living in the new municipality regardless of where they live. Ward or division, representation means that councillors are elected by residents living in that ward or division. There can be many ways to divide a municipality into wards or divisions, but generally the municipality is divided into relatively equal areas based on population. The area of councillors, the number of councillors is not directly governed by legislation. Each municipality can decide how many councillors should represent the population. There are common themes across the province. Generally, councillors are made of, up of an odd number of councillors. Villages often have three councillors, towns often have five, and most rurals have seven. Currently, the village has five and the county has seven. The elected official, may, which is the reeve or mayor, can either be appointed by council or elected by the residents during the election. If appointed, the chief elected official for a rural municipality acts both as the reeve and represents their own individual ward or division. If elected by the residents, the reeve is elected at large and represents all residents of the municipality, not a specific ward. Currently, both the village and county's chief elected official, mayor or reeve, are appointed by council. Okay, so with that understanding, what do you think of having a chief elected official, reeve, appointed by councillors rather than elected by the residents of the new municipality? What do you think of councillors being voted on by wards or divisions rather than at large? What do you think of having seven councillors for the, the new amalgamated municipality? Last is electoral divisions. The committee is thinking of having the new amalgamated municipality divided into seven divisions or wards and having Caroline residents vote in either divisions four or six, depending on which side of the highway you live on. What are your thoughts on this? So we're looking forward to that feedback. We're looking forward to people chiming in. So to wrap up on this presentation, we'll run through the next steps. The committee is scheduled 
to meet next week, which is Thursday, April 25th. They're going to discuss the remaining operational items. Those items are water treatment distribution, sewer collection and treatment, utility rates, the five-year capital plan, remediation plans, utility services, public works operations, recreation facilities, sports facilities, cultural and shared facilities, transportation, landfills, ministerial order for existing seniors lodge. As part of next steps, all of the public's feedback and input from the three public engagement sessions that were held this week will be compiled into a what we heard report. This report will be presented to the committee on May 24th. At that time, the committee will revisit the three items that were discussed, plus any remaining operational items. After this, a draft negotiations report will be written. This report will also include a what we heard report. The draft negotiations will be presented to the committee and followed by the public. The report will then be presented to each council where they will review it and amend it as deemed fit. Council will then make a decision to approve the report or not. The final report will then go to the Minister of Municipal Affairs for a decision. I'll turn it back over to our host to wrap it up. And again, thank you everyone for joining us today. Hey, thanks, Rick. Really appreciate it. So obviously there are a number of questions that have been posed through the engagement, uh, both in this session, but also the two in-person sessions. And so if we could just bring up the slide that shows people how to provide your input, if you'd like to provide it um, in online. So may just for go forward. There we go. So there's an online survey that asks all questions. So as Rick said, there are three major topics that the committee is specifically looking for feedback on. But in addition to that, on the online survey, there is a question around just understanding uh, people's perspectives around what are the opportunities of amalgamation, but also what are the challenges of amalgamation so that the committee can take those into consideration. And so I know for a lot of you, there's, um, yes, we can talk about some of those perspectives, absolutely, and we will get into that in a minute, um, but you may also wanna take a minute and fill out the survey directly. So we encourage you to either do that, you can scan the QR code if you're doing that right now. Of course, you can always do so through the website as well. The survey link will be there. And and the survey will be live until April 30th. Uh, that's the deadline to submit your comments on it. So uh, in addition to that, though, we do want to move into a Q&A. And I don't see any questions in the chat at this point, but I am curious as to whether or not anybody has questions that you'd like answered, if it's clarification questions, or even if you want to provide some of your thoughts around some of the areas that we're looking for feedback on. And if you'd like to raise your hand, either virtually or you can put your video on and just wave at me, I'm happy to do either. Anybody got any questions? It's looking like there might not be any questions so far, but I'll give you a couple minutes. Sometimes it takes a minute to think through what you want to ask specifically. Okay, well, I'm not seeing oh. any. Oh, am I hearing someone? Marianne Cole. Ah, Marianne, please go ahead. Well, I'll just get it started. I was hoping I would hear from other people before me. So I was just wondering after the uh, draft is proposed, there were public reviews. What are the plans for open public meetings to review the draft? Great question. Thanks, Marianne. Rick, are you able to take that or should we ask uh, any of the admin support for that? Um, actually, I, I believe, Marianne, this this is the public engagement. Um, as you well know, participated in the previous uh, public engagements, this is further into the process. I think what uh, the two councils are looking to do is Get that feedback on on really the three items that were brought back onto the table. Um, get feedback. Um, we've been active on social media. We haven't ha heard a lot on any of the other items. Um, so I think there's a general feeling of comfort out there. Um, if we can get some feedback on, on these three so that we can provide that 
good advice from our public into uh, the committee and draft it up and proceed with the process is is my feeling, Marianne. So there may not be open public meetings after this with the draft report? Is that what you're saying, Rick? I don't believe there will be, Marianne. Um, you know, every meeting has been uh, live streamed. We put it on social media. We had the previous rounds and now this round. Um, I do believe this this will kind of be the end of the public engagement portion um, to wrap up the analysis and, and bring it forward. Maybe Rick, I'll, I'll just mention, maybe I'll just also mention in reviewing some of the committee meetings, there was discussion at the committee level about potentially bringing that draft strategy back to the public in some mechanism, but the committee has not made a decision on that. So I just want to make sure that that information is out there and make sure that, you know, all information is there, but there has, my understanding is no decision on that at this point. Okay. I just have a real serious concern about the overemphasis of public engagement uh, and presentation of information on social media and the format that these last two meetings this week have held. Um, and I think it came forward in every one of those meetings that people were not happy with the format they wanted to have an open sit down meeting where information like what you just finished doing, Rick, it was excellent. You know, people needed to hear and see that in person and hear it rather than sort of trying to read it on some piece of paper. And then they, you know, we could have also have heard the comments and concerns openly from the general public and the general public would have all heard the same questions the same answers and that hasn't happened and so for there not to be you know an open sit down presentation of information meeting to the general public with the draft report it's a real serious concern well, thank you, Marianne. I appreciate that feedback, and we will certainly take that uh, into the What We Heard report and make sure that the information gets passed along. Are there thank any you. other questions from yourself, Marianne, or for, uh, from others, or, or concerns or comments? Okay, well, I'm not seeing any, so we will certainly take that feedback. Thank you, Marianne, appreciate it. Um, and what, as we said, this video will be posted. It'll give us, you know, a little bit of time to uh, make sure it gets downloaded and all that, and then it'll be uploaded to the website, uh, available for all residents and interested parties to review. Uh, and then the What We Heard report will be developed over the next number of weeks, as Rick said, and brought forward to a, a subsequent meeting of the Amalgamation Committee, along with uh, when they start to reconsider some of these topics and look to develop a full draft report on their negotiations. And so if you have any additional comments or questions that you think of after this session, Martina, if you could just bring that slide back up, I want to just remind everybody that the opportunity to provide your comments through the survey, all comments will be taken in and summarized into that What We Heard report. Please do so at the website there. And you can, of course, follow along on Facebook and Twitter and the YouTube channel for updates on the amalgamation in general. So with that, that is the end of our session today. And we thank you everybody for attending. And uh, as I said, please do provide your feedback. We very much appreciate your insights. And thanks staff and team, really appreciate your guys' help. Absolutely. Thanks everyone. Cheers.